as of 8 a.m. this morning, St. Lucia has been placed under a hurricane warning. So we are no longer under a tropical storm warning. Right now, we are under a hurricane warning. What does that mean? It means that there is a potential for St. Lucia to receive hurricane conditions um, from the system. So again, we need to make people understand that we are under a hurricane warning and that the system has not passed. We got a lot of calls this morning because you would recognize that we had some rain and wind last night and we had a calm this morning and persons were saying that the brunt of the system has passed. It has not reached us and we are on the hurricane warning right now. Okay, when, 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 when is it expected to hit the island or pass the island? We understand that these systems are very unpredictable. Um, they slow down, they move quickly. In this case, the system has slowed down considerably. We expect, however, that the weather will deteriorate later today. And so what we're asking persons is to observe the advisories, observe the guidelines. We made indoors, we are under a shutdown. You remain indoors, do not venture out until the all clear is given. Um, as I said, it's difficult to give an exact time of impact. And so what you need to do is just make sure you remain inside until you are told it is safe to be outdoors. Right. So Nemo has been partially activated, which means that we have all of the emergency services right here. We were here from yesterday. We weathered the storm right here. And this is really to ensure that as soon as the system is passed, we can uh, respond very, very quickly. The district committees have also been activated. So they are on standby. They are looking out. They are giving us information. Um, as far as we know, right now, uh, we have not had significant damage in any of the districts. We see signs of flooding in Ancillary, um, but it's not to a, a significant extent. Um, but these committees are on standby and they are um, ready to respond should the case uh, warrants it. We also have our shelter managers that are also on standby that if persons uh, would like shelters open in specific areas, we can facilitate that as well. We have not had any requests for opening up shelters. The shelters are still closed currently. You would know that the practice normally is that we open the shelters post um, an event and we encourage persons to weather the storm with family and friends. However, we do have the provision for allowing opening of shelters if it's required in communities. Um, the district committees would contact us or anybody for that matter could also contact us. We liaise with the district committee to see uh, where the needs are and we can facilitate opening of shelters before if it is required. So roughly, uh, there are shelters all around? The there are shelters in all of the uh, districts that persons can access. They are identified by the red sign that says emergency shelters. And um, we can use them for any emergency because we know that we're prone to several hazards. They're not just for hurricanes, but whatever emergencies we, we have, we can have those shelters opened. Any areas in particular you are concerned about? Well, we know that traditional flood-prone areas, the Bexo area, the Ansari, the Canaries, the Viewfort area, Denry, we are particularly paying attention to those areas because we know that those areas flood very quickly. A uh, number of school personnel who went over to the affected islands to assist and now we seem to, we may be facing our own um, disaster. Has that hampered us in any way? Are we still um, fully boosted to deal with any emergency if Absolutely. We still do have the, the relevant skills on island to be able to respond effectively and respond very quickly if it is required. We have been in touch this morning with uh, some of our team members outside of St. Lucia. We were able to touch base with the Wasco team in St. Kitts. Um, in fact, they were supposed to be coming in today, this morning, but they recognize the condition and they can't be, cannot be here. But we do, yes, have the, the capacity for that. Additionally, if it is required that they get back here, we, we will make the arrangements to get, get them back in St. Lucia as soon as the all clear is given. Okay. Finally, from me, people not giving the warnings to stay indoors is a problem. Uh, this is a very significant challenge that we have. We need to discuss and to agree on how we're going to, to address that particular situation. Um, 
it's very disturbing that the information would have gone out early enough and you still have persons just blatantly disregarding the, the advisories and still going about as if it's business as usual. I think we just had the case of Irma. We had previous cases that would prove to people that you really need to take heed. Yesterday we had a discussion on, on Hurricane Thomas. It developed very, very quickly. So you never know what is going to happen, what is going to come out of these systems. Um, yesterday we were tropical storm warning. Today we're already under hurricane warning. We need to take heed of the advisories and we need to make sure that we do as we're told. Um, if we don't, then you can have, you know, situations, uncomfortable situations to deal with, and then persons tell you, well, we didn't know. We had the, the discussion that it's, it's only a tropical storm. It's not a hurricane. A tropical storm and a Category 1 hurricane, there's very little difference. Um, and we, also, we always advocate that you prepare for the worst-case scenario because, you, again, you don't know what is going to happen. So I think I am not sure whether the education is not reaching. We're looking at a different strategy from here. We're talking about how we can have the messages tailored to particular groups. So the message that we give into the fishermen, the school children, that we tailor it so that we make sure persons understand. Um, we have made sure that we have multiple mediums to disseminate the information. So we have the Facebook up and running. It's manned. You get uh, information in near real time. We have Twitter. We have the website that is up and, and running. We use SMS messages. You know, we use all means so that everybody somehow would get the information that there's something out there and you need to take all necessary precautions. I think what we can do from here is to continue doing that, continue the education until, you know, persons really buy into it and, and pay attention to what's going on. Just balancing that with the need for people to stick to the official sources because we've observed that persons um, are using the social media in a negative way and a lot of rumors, a lot of messages that are foreign from St. Lucia are also being in the mix. What do you have to say to that? This is another challenge that we have. I think every advisory that we send out and every message we send out from Nemo, we keep on stressing the point that you listen to what is coming out of the St. Lucia Med Office and the Nemo St. Lucia. However, we still see persons taking things from all over the place, from Barbados, from St. Vincent. And no matter that, it does not matter that St. Vincent is close to us. What obtains for St. Vincent may not be relevant for St. Lucia. We have to understand that the information that we, we must listen to and pay attention to is what is coming from the St. Lucia Met Office and Nemo St. Lucia. Now we're all online, we're taking all kinds of things from all kinds of, of stations, from all kinds of websites. Again, we stress what is relevant to us is what is coming from the St. Lucia Met Office and the National Emergency Management Organization, Nemo St. Lucia. We encourage you, um, we're pleading with you that you listen to what is coming from us and you act based on that.